I think that was a very smart decision that you took. And uh, what you just said about, you know, uh, picking up something and then finishing it and moving forward. I think this is a sign out of personal experience. This is a sign of very smart people. Mm-hmm. Jo average low hote hai, meri zara, wo decide karte hai. Okay, this is what I'm going to study. <laughs> <laughs> different things have work for different people. The schedules and routines doesn't really work for me. So I right. force myself into that. Right, right. Wonderful, wonderful. Hi everyone, my name is Anuj Chindal. Welcome to my channel. Today I have a very special guest, Shuchona Ghosh, who cleared RBI grade B examination in the year 2020-21. I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. Yes. <laughs> and uh, first of all, congratulations to you on getting selected. Thank you uh, so much. Bahut effort lagta hai and student normally takes years to prepare and clear this examination. I think you're very fortunate and plus the hard work and the smart work that must have you know, been gone together along with your luck must have made sure or has made sure that you've gone through the examination. Uh, with the, before starting with the actual interview, let me ask uh, Shuchona to introduce herself, to tell the aspirants, the future aspirants about her educational background, if there is any work experience, since when has she been preparing for RBI and anything or everything that you want to talk about. Shuchona. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Shuchona. And um, I completed uh, my master's in science in, in, the, in biotechnology from St. Xavier's College, Kolkata. And um, I post-graduated in 2019. And since that, I have been started preparing for different exams. Like, actually, I had qualified the CSIR net uh, in life science. So I had a fellowship for a PhD, but uh, I eventually realized that it is not really my cup of tea. And I chose not to pursue that direction. And I came towards preparing exams. So it's been from 2019 and uh, initially I started uh, preparing for GPSC, civil services, but uh, eventually um, I gave prelims once and the prelims was actually delayed due to uh, by the pandemic in 2020. Then it got delayed and it happened in October, yes. and, but I couldn't clear the prelims. And after that, I started, I, I thought that I should like not put all the eggs in one basket and I should uh, like look out for other exams as well and that's when I came to know about this RBI examination and I started preparing for that and um, I prepared uh, the, for the phase, phase one first and uh, since uh, many of the elements of phase two were prepared uh, beforehand due to my UPSC preparation so phase two, I gave phase one but uh, the prelims but they were really tough it, uh, GA section especially was like uh, it's too detailed I, I heard later that it was quite uh, tougher than the previous years right so uh you gave phase one and then uh phase two i think you will uh yes yes i will i will yeah uh i think i think uh what see i i remember when i was in college when i was doing my graduation at that time my father used to get after me and he was like upsc karna hai upsc karna hai and I was not very fond of it at that point of time. So uh, my father, one day, he just uh, booked an appointment with uh, Dr. Ravindran, who is the director of Vajiram. And he was like, Chalo, let's go and let's meet him. At least there is there is no harm done in going and meeting him. And I remember I met Dr. Ravindran and he, the first thing that he told me was, uh, I asked him, sir, prepare karna hai UPSC ke liye, what should I do? So he said, abhi graduation kar rahe ho, complete your master's, then think about it. And I asked him, why is that? Because every all the all the seniors and everyone in my college and around that area used to say that the minimum qualification is graduation. graduation. So you might as well start with your prep. And he said, no, no, I understand uh, that the minimum qualification is graduation, but the maturity that the examination needs is much more. And uh, the, I did not realize it then, but I realize it now that I'm, you know, mentoring a lot of students and I see a, a, a big gap between the quality uh, with respect to maturity of a graduate student versus a person who's done a post-graduation. So I can relate when you're saying that I've done a, my post-graduation and then you've cleared the examination yeah. in your second attempt itself. Uh, this attempt. is first attempt in RBI first. and one attempt with UPSC. Yeah. So, so very amateur when it comes to other students, when you're comparing with other students. But it's the previous experience, it's the previous accumulated knowledge and maturity that you you know carry along with you because of your post grad. I think that is the reason. That is the primary reason that you've made it through so fast. So 
the learning that I think that the students get here is not to not write after graduation, but to ask themselves whether they are mature enough to take on such an examination or not. And uh, yeah, before moving forward, I think I forgot to ask you how how good or bad or how 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 de-stressed do you feel after getting selected? Because UPSC aspirants ke liye especially बहुत ज़्यादा stressful हो जाता है. I know that for a fact. So, yeah. how has been the experience since the results came out? So actually, uh, like um, it's it's been actually overwhelming. Like the response I'm getting from everyone, and like my fingers are now tired from <laughs> listening to people in WhatsApp. So it's like it's of course I'm I feel very very relieved. And at least it actually it was like the previous year. Uh, this whole year has been very uncertain. Like uh, you can see, every exam was getting delayed, and actually everyone. When what happens is like uh, all my peers, all my friends, even my juniors are all moving forward with their careers, whereas I am mm. like stuck in home. That is another big point: the isolation by due to the pandemic. So mm. I'm stuck in home and I'm studying, and not, nothing is nothing much is happening, and everything is getting delayed. So it was a very stressful time, very uncertain, the mm. feelings of inadequacy. So a lot of like struggles were there apart mm. from the studies. Hmm. So yeah, so all of that is over now, and I feel very relieved and very happy actually. And I made my parents proud, so that's an that's the main uh, thing that I'm feeling. Like. So I'm very happy. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Very happy to hear that. Uh, let's move on to the examination now. Uh, I would want to start with the uh, with the with the most important point, which is the descriptive part. Uh, yes. So a lot of students are very scared of descriptive. but at the same time i think this is a blessing in disguise because descriptive helps you know bring out the quality in you and segregate exactly. the yeah. not so good aspirants yes. from the good yes. aspirants so it is a very good method of you know dividing the crowd so how did you move forward with the descriptive part specifically related to fm because that is an area which has been new for you yes uh, so uh, actually so uh, the finance part some of the finance some of the topics Uh, like were prepared due to my UPC preparation, I just mm. had to revise them. Mm. And uh, the do and in for the civil services, I had to like practice descriptive writing. Although I won't say that I practiced a lots of means answer writing. I did a few, not a lot, mm. uh, but still uh, the habit of you know uh, re- remembering definitions and the whole sentence construction, and not just the facts, the whole mm. uh, thing. So that uh, helped me, and um, it was. Uh, but I did not have to do much. Like I did not have a practice a lot. I did not actually didn't have the time enough so to practice a lot. So it came kind of naturally. Mm. And for management, I did it separately. I had I had to study management. And since I knew that the fifty percent would be descriptive for management, mm. so while studying, I was like trying to like uh, you know uh, like framing sentences in that way and uh, informing like providing the, like having the structure like mm. while reading the books. So I. During studying only, I try to inculcate those things in my mind so that I can mm. reproduce them if asked. Mm. And uh, for finance, some of the questions were really straightforward, like yes. uh, recommendations of finance commissions, mm. uh, functions of CDB, NHB. So those were like uh, big questions sh- uh, broken up into shorter ones. So right. those were not that difficult, kind of like you know uh, they were not difficult. But there was one question in ESI where I had to like like think a lot and. the question on globalization what ha- the nature of globalization post the gfc crisis mm. so i attempted that question and uh, that was a really tricky one and mm. i had to like think a lot of different uh, things collate all the information and you know uh, like type it out in at that time so that mm. was difficult i think the rest mm. of them were more or less like oh i mean it, it mm. went good uh coming back a, a little bit to upsc because you've been an aspirant of be- both these examinations how did you manage between these two how did you juggle between these two because although there are overlaps but there are challenges also for upsc you have to read a lot more you have very limited time for rpi so how did you manage the time between these two exams so uh, for rbi i uh, for the phase 1 uh, the qre sections the points and reasoning i was not that much familiar with it previously like before i started the preparation so when i got to know it i realized that i need a lot of practice so it's mm. like i gave one or one and a half months solid for just practicing points and reasoning and i mm. took the higher difficulty higher difficulty uh, problems and i just practice all day 
Uh, not all day but in as much as i could hmm. um so i practice qri requires a lots of practice not english english was uh, kind of like okay for me hmm. and uh, the ga the ga part is significantly different from what we do from for upsc it requires a lots of like mugging up a lots of facts right so i did i memorized uh, and i tried to like memorize it like before the like in february in january to february Mm. those two months so that the f- facts are fresh in my mind and um, i remember them in prelims so that those are the different parts and management was the extra part uh, in rbi mm. yeah. mm-hmm. mm-hmm. so that you covered separately, separately. so uh, if if let's say i think like an aspirant then were you giving uh, time to both upsc and rbi together in one day or were you like let's say uh segregating or allocating let's say three days to rbi and four days to upsc something like this so actually uh i kind of i mean personally i don't like separate my sh- i i'm not a like schedule oriented person it's like mm. i start something and i finish that topic and then i move on to other topics i have been always mm. like that it's mm. not like i have to wake up at this time and i don't like uh break up my day into one hour uh, routine and all so i'm not a routine driven person i the so studying comes naturally to me Hmm. Uh so no the, there there wasn't anything like that 3 days 4 days for me up but uh, after prelims i took a kind of like a break from all the history geography all those parts and i focused on these parts so okay. that um hmm. and because uh, the pandemic was going on so i thought hmm. if there is a very good possibility that you guys will get postponed in the next year also right so and that ultimately did happen so hmm. uh, i kind of like uh, forgot the history geography preparing those and i focused solely on rbi Okay okay i think that was a very smart decision that you took and uh, what you just said about you know uh, picking up something and then finishing it and moving forward i think this is a sign out of personal experience this is a sign of very smart people jo average log hote hain meri zara wo pehle decide karte hain okay this is what i'm going to study because <laughs> <laughs> have work for different people the schedules and routine doesn't really work for me so i right. force myself into that right right wonderful wonderful okay uh let's move forward newspaper although i know that you must be used to reading the hindu or some other newspaper did you pick up anything specifically for rbi if yes what if no then do you think that we need specifically a uh, newspaper to be read every day so uh for if i think about rbi uh, for prelims for phase 1 and phase 2 i don't think newspaper reading is that must required because the ga topics are not all of them are not given in one newspaper you have to rely on the notes from some coaching institution or the other so mm. for phase 1 phase 2 newspaper is not that needed but for mm. interview it is very much needed mm. and you get like 2 to 2 and a half months before interview and you can easily pick up uh, like i used to read uh, the indian express and the mint mm. and these two newspapers i used to follow and for interview the newspaper is required so what is happening uh, what are the current issues and they have editorials regarding those issues hmm. so the editorials are more important like a financial newspaper has uh, lots of segments that are not really needed like stock prices right. Right. company uh, informations those are not needed but right. the editorials are very uh, important like and uh, in our i remember in our um, like interview like uh, one of the questions was like speak on uh, speak for 3 minutes on the chinese economy speak mm-hmm. for 3 minutes on bangladesh economy those were mm-hmm. bouncers really mm-hmm. but uh, like for answering those you have to have a holistic idea about what is happening in the neighboring countries and for that mm-hmm. for that the newspaper reading is important and that is right. strictly the point to do right right that was supposed to be my next question any bouncers or any out of the blue questions in the interview that you felt no so fortunately i did not face such bouncers like uh, someone was also joking that they might now ask about korean economy or uh, like that so yeah those required a lot of instant thinking but mm. thankfully i did not was not asked any of those but mm. uh, i expected the most like the like obvious question for me would be like i had mentioned the net qualification in my bio data so mm. the first question that they asked was expectedly why i did not pursue a phd and mm. i had prepared an answer for that mm. i think uh, they Uh, like ask some cross questions but i think they were more or less satisfied with it mm-hmm. so any 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 uh, you, did they ask you any questions related to upsc versus rbi no no i think nothing like that okay i okay i i think you got safe there yes. uh, because students normally get stuck there probably because of the gap is because of small. the smaller gap yes 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 okay uh 
last question revision i think this is very important and a lot of students tend to get confused how to revise or uh, they want to revise but they don't know how to do it uh, so so did you follow any specific strategy for revision or any specific method for revision before the exam yes i did uh, actually for uh, like for phase 1 the ga portion needs a lots of revision because if there are those are lots of facts and mm. it's always dynamic if they are changing so they need a constant revision so that part requires lots of revision and i think one should do it uh, according to one's own nature and schedule and you know how one approaches it mm. so gee that ga requires lots of revision and for phase 2 the esi fm the basic concepts of course they do need revision and uh, before interview what i did was since it's going to be a question answer format so uh, i actually i saw a few previous years videos i think one aspirant was there who used flash cards and mm. i used i also i i saw that it is actually a very good method because flash cards mm. always like one question and one short and simple concise answer mm. so i used that i went to a website called uh, something I forgot but that uh, i prepared like 300 plus flash cards over there so preparing gave me one layer of revision and uh, practicing those flash flash cards gave me another layer of revision so that mm. like they ask a question and i'm able to answer it in a very like, crisp and short and concise way mm. so flash cards really helped me before the mm. interview mm. and yeah okay amazing amazing so i think uh, you had a very 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 detailed and very uh, you know well laid out strategy for revision and that must have helped okay anything you want to say out to the aspirants before we actually close the interview anything that any tip that you would want to give them uh, that you personally felt worked in your favor so i think uh, for phase 1 in the qre section i think one should play to one's own strength like there are some Uh, like in quant there are some sums like which i'm not like which i which are like i take lot of lots of time to solve them so i just ignore this and since i know that i can't attempt all of them so i just play to my strengths and i chose the ones the type of sums that i am comfortable in and i just solve those in the exam and same mm-hmm. for reasoning like uh, a few of the sitting arrangement questions i just take a lot of time i can do them but i take a lot of time which is ultimately of no use Hmm. So I just ignored all those sums and focus on the ones that I could do, and it, hmm. I think it kind of I it, it did help me. Hmm. And um, for uh, phase two, I would say that you I we should like practice with a keyboard, like typing on a keyboard because reading, revising is one thing, and hmm. typing them out in the phase two, like on that exam hall, and that they had like six hours of typing, so that's hmm. a lot of stress. Hmm. It it is it gets very exhausting. Hmm. but uh, so but the typing needs to be practiced especially in a older keyboard like not right. in a smooth keyboard of a laptop huh. so if you don't have a computer i think you should just buy some uh, extra keyboard or maybe a second hand like you know right. old design keyboard and you practice typing there because that's a extra hurdle that you face in the examination that oh wow now i have to deal with this mm-hmm. when it comes to interview uh, did you think that it is more about your personality confidence and the vibes that you send out then 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 only about the answers that you're giving so yes definitely the moment you like walk in and you sit in front of them and you greet them uh, i think the like they do check your like confidence the way you're handling yourself the way you're speaking so that obviously makes the first impression so you, like we should just be calm and present our own like present our real self hmm. and not be afraid and hmm. speak clearly and whatever like you should enjoy the experience that you are speaking to such extreme fans exactly exactly so yes of course the the mannerism the personality helps in big way yes 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 uh thanks a lot uh, i believe it has been uh, you know it will be very enriching for the students uh, listening okay. to you because you. although you said you did not make any plans uh, at the start of the day when you start studying but i believe the clarity in your mind uh you know is very very clear to me i i can actually feel it that when you're preparing you are very focused on it and i wish that all the students are able to you know gather that and take that out of this video this session and use that in their own preparation uh all the best for your uh, future endeavors all the best for your life Thank in you, rbi Thank i'm you, certain you're going to enjoy it it's a beautiful organization and uh, all the best for your life take care <laughs> thank you so much thank you